Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you for joining me. And today I'm continuing this discussion with regards to autopsies and why it's important. Just for background, my focus since the beginning of the pandemic was on autoimmunity as being the primary mechanism for severe COVID-19. We've published two papers about this. We've been working on more. And essentially, that piece of research, as far as I can see, explains every pattern to do with COVID-19 and the severity of the disease. Within that framework, it raises an important question. How do we understand what's happening in severe COVID-19 or even beyond that, if we are not doing enough autopsies? I was very appreciative of the fact that recently most people are picking up on that very important point when I published uh, a recent video on the first complete autopsy that was done on a COVID vaccinated death. I thought that was a very important piece of research, but we need lots more. As part of that, what I'm focused on today, and I'm highlighting this to those who are interested, please, Join me as I set up a course. This is an online course and the link is below where you can join me where I'm going to be analyzing another paper that has come up. You just have to click on the links there and you'll be able to join me in the Learn World School where I'll share with you more information as I build a, a number of people who have good understanding of the pathology and the science around COVID-19 from an autoimmune perspective. What exactly am I going to be looking at? Well, it happens that the first paper that I spoke about just uh, about a month ago was from Italy. And guess what? The second paper that I'm going to be talking about here is also from Italy. And so we appreciate what these Italians are doing. This was published on the 23rd of February, 2023. And you can see here, autopsies reveal pathological features of COVID-19 in unvaccinated versus vaccinated patients. That's exactly the kind of information that we need. And that's what I'll be looking at. So if you're interested, please click on the link to join me on that course. So I'll not go through that paper here, but I'll explain to you why it is that in my view, this is absolutely essential information. So essentially in 2020, and I'll show you here my post on Substack. This was December 2020. And I said there, last opportunity to understand the pathology of COVID-19 before vaccination skews the research. And at the bottom here, I said, assuming that vaccination will completely eliminate COVID-19 is hopeful, but unlikely. And then it will be more challenging to understand the pathophysiology. That's exactly what I thought then. And that's what I think now. The only other bit of information, because I understood that, and critically, as I said before, I understood what had happened in 2012. I keep on making reference to this. This is just one of the papers, but in 2012, when they were looking at vaccines for SARS-CoV, they found that all of them caused pulmonary immunopathology. The reality is that you can only find this on autopsy. So if you are not doing autopsy, you will have no idea if the pattern that occurred in 2012 when they were using mice at that time also occurs in humans, you wouldn't know if you weren't doing autopsies. Similarly, last year, this was in 2020, in April 2022, um, this is almost 18 months after we had rolled out vaccination, we finally did one paper looking at viral loads and what causes drives fatal cases of COVID-19 in vaccinees, an autopsy study. This one was absolutely critical, and I did a number of presentations looking at what it showed in terms of viral dissemination. The sad part is that that was done in April 2022. I had to wait until 2023 before we had that one case from Italy, which was a complete autopsy. And then 
we have to wait a few more months before we have the next one that is coming out. You have to consider that in the unvaccinated, in the early part of the pandemic, we have thousands of autopsies, thousands of resources and research to look at and to try and understand what is happening. Why would we not replicate that in the context of patients who have been vaccinated and died? It's an even more critical question because we are talking about people who've had a strong immune response. They've got antibodies. They've got T cell responses. How can that virus then cause the same pathology that caused severe COVID-19 in someone who was unvaccinated? It doesn't make sense. And part of the question is, we need to understand the mechanism. What exactly caused those patients to die who had COVID-19 when they were vaccinated? What is the difference in the pathology? Does it help us in terms of understanding treatment? Do you need to use different therapy in the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated? These are all absolutely critical questions. And what we have found is that our approach to severe COVID-19 is using the same techniques that we have used at the early part of the pandemic, when we quite likely should have absolutely changed direction. So again, at a final point, why is it that these autopsies seem so hard to do? Well, it does seem that there are a lot of rules. So let's not just blame pathologists because I am sure they are just as curious as everyone else. I've got here the CDC submission with regards to post-mortem specimens in diseased persons who were confirmed or suspected of COVID-19. And when you look in detail at the mechanism or the steps that have to be taken, collection of autopsy tissue specimens, um, in the, the locations, how it is handled, the precautions that are associated with it, how it has to be submitted. Um, the, uh, even below this, they talk about the kind of cleaning, waste and disposal recommendations afterwards, the, um, the protection that is required for pathologists, also to do the ventilation of the labs. It's just very difficult. And this seems to be the problem. Because it is so difficult and it only seems to occur in very um, in institutions with lots of resources, it's made difficult for the general pathologist to execute on ex exercising and studying what could be happening in these patients. All I can say is I understand the concern that the CDC, the WHO would have for pathologists. But you have to remember that clinicians, nurses, everyone who was in the health sector had to face patients with COVID-19 during the pandemic. They had to see them oftentimes without any protection. Well, we can argue about if it was beneficial. But the point was that if they can do that and take the risk, we absolutely need the pathologists to be studying the disease to help us to understand it better. That's my point. And my hope is that this will lead to a call for a change in direction, because let me tell you this, if there are things that are happening pathologically that we are unaware of because we have not looked and we need thousands of autopsies, I'm not talking about 10 or 20 more, thousands more autopsies, especially on people who are vaccinated and died with COVID-19, we need to understand exactly what the mechanisms that lead to death are. As far as I'm concerned, that seems to be a reasonable question. I'm not sure why that can't be executed. So again, as a final point, please remember, if you want to join me, join me on this COVID uh, vaccinated deaths course. This is what I'm trying to analyze. I've got the first lot of autopsies and I plan to look at as many as I can over the next few months, hopefully when they are done. Have a great day, everyone. And let's keep pushing because much more research needs to be done.